Hello everybody and welcome to Lauren Loves Color. This is Lauren. I am here for a tip, um, a quick tip for you today. Um, if you have watched any of my videos from last month, I came to the horrible realization as many of you, as many, many of you have come across the same situation as me. Come on, Lauren, get your words together. Um, where you're working with markers, maybe a new set of markers or a really old set of markers, and you find out that they yellow. And when I mean that they yellow, I mean that you open your pages and you find out on the back of your page, you find this. You find this kind of splotchy yellow shadowing that comes from sometimes cheaper marker sets or marker sets that are... Um, um, I guess not acid free or something like that. And so they cause issues with yellowing on your pages. Well, gosh, I have shared my journey about that and my concerns about Ohuhu markers um, causing yellowing um, in my last video. I've posted about it on Instagram. I've contacted Ohuhu and that's because it's just, it's so frustrating as a colorist to find that you find markers, especially a brand that you trust like Ohuhu, to have markers that yellow. Um, and if you're not aware of which ones they are, um, it's these sets of markers and you can see I have them taped and stuff like, I legitimately film filmed um, a footage over a period of about a month that I'm sending to Ohuhu this week to show them and demonstrate the issues that I'm having with this set of markers. So I'm so glad that I have so many wonderful friends on Instagram and through the ColorTube community because Jamie from Jamie's Coloring Love, who you guys all know and love, I will link her information down below, is so sweet and gave me a tip. Um, she had actually given me my very first suggestion, which was to use workable fixatives. So to actually spray the page that was yellowing, which for me, it was this page to spray it with workable fixative, the front and the back and see if it keeps it from yellowing further. So I did that and I thought it was working for a while and then I kind of found out like no, like after a few weeks I was like no, it's still yellowing um, and the yellowing is still continuing. I still had like, I put in like a new blank piece of paper just to see if it would still yellow and it was still yellowing. Um, and so then she came to me with another idea and I thought I would just film a quick tutorial on how to do this because I think this is gonna solve the problem. And this works not only if your pages are yellowing but maybe you don't wanna use fixative sprays on your pages and you're using things like chalks, pastels, things that that, like rub off on other pages. Um, maybe you're working in one of those fancy books or something like that. If you have anything that's like an eight and a half by 11 standard size, this will work for you. So what Jamie said is that she saw this idea from another uh, YouTuber called Poony Poony Crafts. I'm not sure if that's how you pronounce it, but I will try to find her channel and link it down below as well, where you utilize page protectors to actually protect your coloring pages. So what this is, what I have done is actually cut the side, like where the three hole punch is out of the page protector and put it over this page. And so it kind of encloses, ooh, this is a little scratched up, but it encloses the page so that hopefully, if since I know that this page yellows, I won't have any more yellowing continue. Um, I'm also gonna do this page too, because it has yellowing on it to see because I don't know if it will continue to yellow through the pages if there's already yellowing. Um, I did it to this book and then I also did it to this page in my Belba family book um, where I have done this. But I think this is a really handy trick, um, especially if you are looking for um, um, looking for ways to just protect your pages without using a fixative. So I thought this was really, really nice. And it, I mean, it's super simple and super easy. Um, I have this kind of fun and crazy notebook. I'm just going to pull a, um, I used to store some of my PDFs in here, um, pull this out. And I mean, and that's the thing for me is I could, you know, when people did suggest this to me, cut out the page out of the book and just put it in a separate binder or things like that. But I really like my books. Like I like my books together. So all you need is a pair of scissors and some of these page protectors, and you can choose cheap ones. They don't have to be, you know, super nice or fancy ones. Um, I have a lot of these left over from college and grad school, and we've just carried them to our house, so I have a ton of them. Um, but all you're going to be doing is just cutting across, um, like, where the three-hole punch is. It's slightly, like, um, perforated. And so I'm just going to take my scissors and cut along here. And like the nice thing is, is like it still maintains the integrity of the um, page and the integrity of the book, but without having to take stuff out of the book. And so thank you so much, Jamie, for sharing this because I mean, this is amazing. And so it kind of leaves me still with the thing attached. And so I just kind of pull it, just kind of pull it apart along that edge. 
all the way down. And so what you're going to be left with is still two, page, two sides of the page that are attached. So this is really the bottom and then one of the sides. And then these two flaps, and gosh, it's going to be hard to see, are open. So if I've got my page here, this side and this side are still attached together. This side and down here are open. Um, so what you want is you want that flap to open like this. Um, to open from the bottom left to the top right, and that's how you're going to do your page. If you try to flip it over and do it like this to where the bottom seam is down here, it's just that it's going to it's gonna be kind of out of your book like, like this one is. So actually, this one needs to be changed. I need to move this one also, flip it up this way, because you kind of want it to be a little taller than lower, because when you put your book, you know, up on the bookshelf or whatever, you want it to not be bending the bottom of that sheet protector and you literally just slide it over your page like that so there's a little bit of a um, it kind of does overlap a little bit on my page up here and up on top but I mean that's not bad and that protects your page really nicely so I'm gonna do it on this page here with my one that I just cut out and I eventually will go back and color this page so that um, I cannot have to stare at the yellow. And I mean, yellowing, you know, bothers some people more than others. For some, you may not really mind it at all. And for me, it's not like the end of the world. Like I can definitely still color. It's not like I, you know, can't color. I need to throw the book away and get a new one. Um, but it's also too like I want to continue. I want to try to prevent it as much as possible from continuing to the other pages if I can. So that's really it. That's the tip that I have for you guys today. I thought I really wanted to share it with you just because it was so helpful for me, um, and I think it's going to solve my yelling problem. So thank you, thank you very much to Jamie, and um, I will talk to you all again in my next video. Bye.